We think MCT oil and we think this magical ketogenic oil that's created in a lab somewhere. We forget that MCT oil is derived from foods. So let's figure out which foods are rich in MCT oil so that we can get our ketone levels high and get the most out of our ketogenic diet. MCT oil is awesome and it has tremendous places. So let's figure out how we can get more of it just through eating delicious food too. I do wanna make sure you hit that red subscribe button in the bottom corner and then please hit that bell icon so that way you can turn on notifications and never miss a daily video on this channel. So MCT oil is strongly ketogenic. It's strongly ketogenic because it digests in a different form. It digests through passive diffusion. It goes through the portal vein, goes into the liver, and ultimately gets converted into ketones very fast. So if you're already in a state of ketosis, it's a great way to spike up your ketone levels. Word to the wise, consuming MCT oil when you're not in ketosis isn't going to create ketones. You have to be in ketosis already. So before I list off the foods, quick breakdown on which specific MCT oils are the most ketogenic. So a quick study reference. This study was published in Current Developments in Nutrition, and it broke down just that. Okay, we have different kinds of MCT oil, C6, C8, C10, and C12. Okay, all indicated by the number of carbon chains, but let's not go there. They wanted to see which one was the most ketogenic. So they had subjects consume these oils in a base of skim milk, of all things, which is totally random. But anyhow, they wanted to see which one would elicit the highest ketogenic response, also in comparison to coconut oil. Well, it turns out that C8 ends up spiking ketones the most. They had the biggest rise in ketone levels after the consumption of C8, from zero to eight hours after consumption. Okay, coconut oil actually did very, very well, coming in at about 25% of what C8 did. However, coconut oil generated more in the way of beta-hydroxybutyrate which is the ketone that we really want for a longer term effect. So the point is, if you wanna get your ketone levels high, C8 is going to get you there. Pure, good quality C8 is what you want. But for a general food and just keeping ketones elevated throughout the course of the day, coconut oil is not a bad thing to munch on. Anyhow, let's go ahead and let's break down which foods have the most MCT oil. First, it kinda of goes without saying, coconut oil. Okay, coconut oil has between 50 and 60% MCTs in it, depending on if you count lauric acid as an MCT. Yeah, it's a little bit debatable, but close to 50% of coconut oil is from something called lauric acid, which is C12. It's as long of a carbon chain MCT as you can possibly get before you're considered a saturated fat. So some researchers say, nope, lauric acid is a saturated fat. And the other side says, no, C12 lauric acid is absolutely an MCT. I say we split the difference because it looks like when you look at how it's absorbed, a good portion of it acts as an MCT and a good portion of it acts as a saturated fat. Point is, we know coconut oil is good. Good quality MCT oil is usually derived from coconut. Okay, so that's how you know you're finding a good quality MCT oil when you're buying one on the shelf, is it's from coconut. Uh, if you want my recommendation on MCT oil, uh, there's a link down below for Perfect Keto. They have a really pure, straight up C8, no blends, no C8, C10, pure C8 MCT oil derived from pure coconut oil. So there's a link down below, that way you can get a special discount on it too for those of you that watch my channel. So highly recommend them. Another way that you can still be getting a similar effect as you would with coconut oil, would be to consume something that's really tasty called coconut butter. Okay, I learned about coconut butter like a year and a half ago. It's dubbed sort of the peanut butter of the tropics because it's like peanut butter, but it's made with coconut. So you're still getting all the oil from coconut, coconut oil, just like if you had peanut butter, you're getting all the oil from peanuts. Okay, you're just getting some of the fiber and some of the pulp too from the coconut. So you get fiber, you get a couple uh, minerals and nutrients, but you're still getting just about the same ratio when you look at the fatty acid profile. So very high fat content, very good. Okay, the next one that you wanna consider utilizing is try using palm oil from time to time. Make sure it's sustainable palm oil, but palm oil is very, very similar to coconut oil. Why does it not get the same benefit? Why, why does it not get the same reaction from people? It still has the lauric acid, which is antimicrobial. It's still a very good fat, and it still has just about the same amount of MCTs as coconut oil. I think it's usually a sustainability thing that people don't really you know, like palm oil as much, but as long as you're getting a sustainable version, it's good to go. You can still get MCT oil that's derived from palm oil when you're buying it in the store or online, but I would still recommend going for a coconut oil-based one. Okay, now let's get into the more fun stuff. Milk. Now, you really shouldn't be consuming milk on a ketogenic diet, but if we extrapolate a little bit more of what milk becomes, like heavy cream and half and half, 
we can kind of do the math here. Goat milk has between 20 and 35% MCTs. Now, it kind of varies depending on who you ask, but largely you see well over 25% MCT. It's largely C10. A good portion of those MCTs that we're seeing are C10, which is a pretty darn good MCT. It's not like lauric acid, which is a C12. That sounds like gobbledygook. I know I sound crazy when I'm talking about this. Point is, that's why goat cheese even has its funny taste. That funny taste is the tanginess of the capric acid, of the high MCT levels. So compare that to cow milk. Cow milk only has about six to 8% MCT, and it has a different kind of protein that's not exactly as good for you when it comes down to the caseinates. So goat milk, whenever you can, especially if you can find goat milk half and half or goat milk heavy cream, but I know those are kind of specialties. But let's break it down further into the cheeses. Goat cheese is probably the most ketogenic food that is out there outside of straight up coconut or palm oil. If you're going to indulge in a cheese, go for a good quality goat cheese. Okay, you still get all the properties from the milk, so you're still looking between 25, 30% capric acid. So you're looking really good quality MCTs. Comparing that to regular cow cheese, you're looking again, five to 10%, even less if it's smoked. So word to the wise, smoked cheeses are going to have a lesser MCT content. They're gonna be a less ketogenic cheese than a non-smoked cheese because the process of smoking changes some of the enzymes and actually makes it so the MCTs are changed a little bit and become a little bit more of long chain fats, have more long chain fat properties. Then we look at butter. They seen a common theme here with the dairy fat. Butter is between five and 8% with some studies showing that organic butter has a higher MCT content than non-organic butter. Probably has something to do with the different grains that are being consumed and things like that. I honestly don't really know why that could be the case because sometimes in grass-fed instances, you see the MCTs are lower. So it's really a little bit of a toss-up, but largely you see that organic butter has a slightly higher amount of MCT, which leads me to a really important one, ghee. Okay, ghee has about 25% medium chain triglycerides. Why? Because you're removing some of the other milk solids, you're removing some of the sugars, you're removing some of the other components. So you're left with a really consolidated median chain triglyceride fat. That is really, really awesome. Combat that with the short chain fatty acids like butyric acid that's in ghee, and you really have a heavily ketogenic fat. Okay, ghee is something you should be cooking with. It has a high smoke point. You should be drizzling it on your veggies. You should be putting it on your keto toast, whatever. Use it as a replacement for butter whenever you can because it's cleaner and it's going to be more ketogenic. So this breaks down the basic ketogenic foods. Yes, you could break down fats and all kinds of foods and you can find a lot more MCTs, but these are gonna be the big ones. If you add these to your diet and you replace some of the snacking nuts and things that you're typically eating with these, I think you're gonna find that your ketone levels go up quite a bit and you feel pretty darn good. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.